Lord of the Oasis Chapter 141, Elite Troops After the Battle They easily won the battle, slaughtered the enemy, gained experience points. Epic Victory Towards this perfect ending, the knot in Kant's heart was slightly lifted. At least five honor points were the most practical reward. It was worth being in a good mood. Open the troop class level up interface. Kant's thoughts tingled. On the retina in front of him, the dialog box immediately refreshed. The interface of troop class appeared. Upgradable troop class, Swadian peasant times 500 people. Cost 10 dinars per person, level up, Swadian recruit. Extra experience points allow level up consecutively. Upgradable troop class, Swadian footman times 37 people. Cost 20 dinars per person, level up, Swadian footman slash Swadian heavy cavalry. Upgradable troop class, Swadian heavy cavalry x 10 people. Cost 120 dinar per person, level up, Swadian knight. Upgradable troop class, Desert Bandits x 40 people. Cost 25 dinars per person, Evil Up, Elite Desert Bandit. Ding you have surplus experience points. Your forces could be upgraded consecutively. Upgradable Troop Class, Elite Desert Bandit times 25 people. Cost 30 dinars per person, Level Up, Serendian Horseman. Most of the close combat troop class could be leveled up. Kant frowned slightly. However, he also found out that there were only a few level 4 troop class could leveled up. Other than the 10 Swadian heavy cavalries who could leveled up to the top tier Swadian knights, the other level 4 troops class showed no signs of leveling up at all. This was obviously something wrong. As a level 4 footman, the Swadian footmen did not directly involved in the battle, so it was only natural that they would receive little experience points. However, one had to know that. In this battle, the archers had played a huge role. The rain of arrows formed by 50 Viagir's archers and 50 Swadian crossbowmen had killed many Jack Allens. Now, there was actually no one who could leveled up to level 5 troop class. This was clearly out of Kant's expectations. He asked the mind communication system, system, in this epic battle. The experience points obtained are unable to allow more level 4 troop classes to reach full experience and level up to level 5 troop class. Ask if you don't understand. The system would always give an explanation. Very soon. A dialogue box popped up on his retina, insufficient experience points, unable to provide more level 4 troop class to level up. This is the explanation, Kant frowned slightly. Yes. The system answered straightforwardly. At the same time, it explained to Kant in detail, although the scale of this battle is large, the enemy is mostly low-level footmen. Their morale is low and their status is extremely poor, so the experience points gained is relatively small. They can only level up for middle troop class, and cannot afford a large number of high-level troops to level up. Thus, only 10 Swadian heavy cavalries can level up to 10 Swadian knight. After explaining, the dialogue box disappeared. Kant nodded. It was indeed the style of the system. It was straightforward and did not said much nonsense. In this battle, Kant indeed used a smaller troop to defeat the larger enemy fleet and won the battle. However, the slaughter of the lower level troops by the elite troops was not a rare scene in the history. Many epic victories were such a case as well. To a certain extent, the size of the troops was indeed better than the quality of the troops. But there was a bottom line. A number of troops with a certain quality was the best choice. Otherwise, it would be like the end of the Han dynasty of an ancient country on earth. The Yellow Turban army had huge advantage of large troops, but it was still massacred by the elite soldiers of the imperial court which led to its defeat in the end. At the same time, this war raised a group of more elite local warlords. Just like some ancient Greek writer once said, a group of beggars could not be called an army. And now, Kant's army was very elite. Through the mind communication system, Kant directly chose, level up. 
Ding system prompt. Level up requires a total of 8,690 dinars. Yes slash no level up? Yes, Kant did not hesitated, level up. Kant's current savings were 22,000 dinars. Even if he spent this amount level up, he did not have to worry about the lack of dinar for the maintenance of the army next week. Because next month, the trade caravan of Rivadin would arrive. The leader of the trade caravan, Jocelyn, would buy all the prisoners he had obtained from this battle. Although the statistics were not yet available. But the number would definitely not be too small. Outside the council hall, in the empty space on the east side of the fortress, the Jack Allens were squatting there. In general, it was estimated that there were more than 2,000 of them. If converted into dinar, it would be a huge amount of money. Kant's savings would also increase to a huge amount. With his affirmation, 8,690 dinars instantly disappeared. The flow of data flowed out quickly. In the entire Oasis lookout, the troop class that could level up were all wrapped inside. Especially the 500 peasant who were still cleaning up the battlefield, their bodies were covered in a data chain. This was the symbol of the transformation from a laborer who worked in agriculture to a military soldier. It seemed like a very short period of time. However, in the eyes of these soldiers who had leveled up, it was like several years had passed. A complete set of combat knowledge was installed into their minds, and their bodies were also modified. It was like they had obtained a strong physique after years of hard training and been through several battles on the battlefield. During the process of leveling up, the system then popped out the dialog box. Ding system prompt. Because experience points surplus, Swadian recruit can continue to level up. Spend 5,000 dinars to level up to Swadian militia. Yes slash no level up? Level up. Kant still did not hesitate and made his choice. 5,000 dinars then disappeared. Then, the recruits who were only wearing leather armor and holding spears and wooden shields had become stronger. The spears in their hands had also become military-grade heavy spear. The leather armor had also become a piece of iron-plated armor with better defense. Beside the combat shovel at their waist, there was an additional quiver with 20 crossbow bolts inserted into it. With the light crossbow on their backs, they had the means to attack from afar. Compared to the appearance of the peasant recruits, these recruits were more like soldiers in the army. Level up was complete. 10 Swadian Knights 37 Swadian Heavy Cavalries 25 Serendian Horsemen 40 Elite Desert Bandits 500 Swadian Militia These elite soldiers had a completely different spirit. Their appearance increased the quality of the troops in Drondheim. Furthermore, the originally useless 500 peasant soldiers could only play a supporting role. When all of them were upgraded to the Swadian militia, it increased the number of troops in Oasis Lookout, causing the combat strength of the troops to soar. All of the troops were already close to a thousand people. If they encountered these low-level Jack Allen again, they would already be qualified to engage in a head-to-head -head battle. Furthermore, from Kant's point of view, even before these 500 militiamen joined, the Drondheim fortress with more than 500 soldiers would still capable to engage in a head-on-head -head battle with those low-level Jack Allen. They might even be able to easily win the battle. The 500 troops were all armored combat soldiers. They could be said to be the elites of the elites. How could these low-level Jack Allen, who lacked water and food, fought against Kant's troops? That was simply a joke. Just like the current scale of the troops, Kant was already confident that even if the real expeditionary army of the Kingdom of Grey Main trekked over the Mannheim coast and tiredly crossed the Naran Desert, even if they had good quality and quantity of troops, when they encountered Kant's troops in the wilderness, it was really uncertain who would live and who would die. Kant's lips curled into a smile. This battle could be considered the turning point of the Drondheim fortress. Close to a thousand elite soldiers would bring absolute safety. Even if the expedition army of the Kingdom of Grey Main arrived, if they wanted to take down this heavily guarded and well-equipped fortress, it was absolutely impossible to succeed unless they paid a heavy price. 
Moreover, there was a possibility of being counterattacked. Ten Swadian knights, 87 Swadian heavy cavalries, five Mamluks, 40 Sarandian horsemen, and 40 elite desert bandits. These were all extremely mobile cavalry troops that could tear apart the footman defense line. 142 heavy cavalry troops that could directly charge into the enemy's formation. 40 assault cavalry troops that could charge together. Their fearsome charge attack was strong enough to break through the hundreds footman formation. In coordination with the heavy footman and footman's attack, they could forcefully break through the enemy's troops in the field. In this era where the heavy cavalry were the elite aces, it was too simple. Level up was complete. Can't put away the dialogue box on his retina. In the council hall, Firentus and Manit had already left. The battle outside had just ended. After a brief report, they continued to get busy with all sorts of things. Especially with regards to the placement of the soldiers, it was also a problem. Almost all the civilians had disappeared. Only fifty peasant women had not leveled up. The fifty empty houses could completely be temporarily converted into military camps. It was good enough to let the soldiers rest now. There was no need to consider the quality of their sleep. As soldiers who had fought in the battlefield, being able to live was their greatest request. The current fortress could not let everyone rest beautifully. There was still a long way to go. Kant shook his head slightly, stood up, and walked out of the council hall. A large number of captives had been brought to the empty space in the military zone on the east side. Jack Allens were everywhere. All of them were crouching in fear, not daring to speak loudly. Their eyes were filled with fear and anger. They were also exhausted caused by the lack of water and food. The militiamen walked out of the city. Each of them was carrying the spoils of war in their arms. They were the male armor and two-handed battle axes of the high-level Jack Allens. Only these valuable things would be collected by the militiamen. As for the tattered animal skins and linen, the militiamen did not attract it by them at all. Although they were collectible, their functions were the same as those spiked club, all of them would be used as cheap fuel, becoming combustible materials for the sugar workshop to boil salt. However, with the end of this battle, Kant's heart was calm. According to Firentus's report, he had captured many high-level Jack Allens. Now, he used these captives to determine where the expedition army of the Kingdom of Greymane had arrived and their movements. Chapter 142, Cruel Interrogation Naturally, Kant did not need to worry about interrogating. He passed down his order. Very soon. Ten Swadian footmen escorted five high-level Jack Allens to the council hall's entrance. They ruthlessly kicked the high-level Jack Allens' legs with their chain-armored boots. The strong kicks caused these captives who had their heads lowered to fall and kneel in front of Kant. Roar, the Jack Allens growled because of the humiliation. However, the ten Swadian footmen who were in charge of guarding the captives did not show any mercy on their faces. Instead, they curled their lips into an insulting smile. They pulled out the bastard swords from their waists and stabbed them heavily into the side of the captives. The tip of the gleaming swords pierced straight into the ground. There was no need to conceal their threatening menace. The captives immediately lowered their heads and wisely chose to submit. Only then the leading footman nodded in satisfaction and reported in a low voice, Lord, we brought them here. Mm, well done, Kant looked at this scene and spoke. At the same time, he lowered his head to look at the five Jack Allens who were surprisingly dressed in linen robe. With a calm expression, he asked, Jack Allen from the Mannheim coast, the kingdom of Grey Maine, why did you invade my fief's estate? As Kant's voice fell, no one answered. The five Jack Allens kneeling on the ground raised their beast-like heads, revealed their fangs on their jaws. Their eyes revealed their anger and unyielding will. They seemed to want to devour people. Their eyes were ice cold. They obviously accused Kant for all the torture and humiliation they had suffered after being captured. If they were healthy and well-fed, they probably wouldn't even care about their own lives. They would carried their battle axes and perished together with Kant, 
who was sitting on the chair at the front steps of the council hall. Ha, unyielding eyes, Kant chuckled. Kneeling in front of others and threatening them with their eyes were always so weak. At least Kant did not care. He spoke to the captives in a cold tone, you must know that your gazes cannot kill others. But I controls your lives, I can easily, he paused for a moment and said indifferently, kill all of you. Bang! Behind the Jack Allen captives, the footmen lifted up their well-made chain armor boots were and heavily kicked on their backs. A dull sound. These captives were all lying on the ground. Their hands were tied up so that they could not prop themselves up. However, there was no need for them to stand up. The Swadian footman that kicked them down reached out and pulled the grey hair on their heads to make them kneel on the ground again. The gleaming bastard sword was placed next to their throats at this moment. The Swadian footman did not want to see their lord being threatened by these inferior races. Even if it was merely the glares from their eyes, that was still not acceptable. Kant nodded at them. He looked at the captives and asked calmly, we can have a good conversation. Is is that so? Finally, a Jack Allen spoke in human language. It was the leader of the pirates. There was still anger and humiliation hidden in its eyes, but it restrained itself and said, Lord of the humans, what? What do you want to know? Kant nodded in satisfaction, cooperation is a wise choice. What do you want to know, the pirate leader repeated. No, if you cooperate, I think you able to calm down. Cooperating in our friendly conversation is a good thing for both of us, a good thing that can be praised. Kant smiled at the pirate leader. What do you think? The pirate leader's expression was slightly ferocious. It had roamed the sea of stars for so many years but it had never knelt down to answer a question in such a humiliating manner. Moreover, it had to kneel in front of human, a race that it always looked down. Its heart was thumping, and its eyes filled with bloodshot. This was really unacceptable. Its anger was raging. However, Kant only chuckled at its anger. Help it calm down. Yes, the footman replied in a deep voice. However, Immediately after this reply, the sound of the wind whistling could be faintly heard. Before the pirate leader could react, the scabbard that was embedded with iron skin directly struck its cheek. The force of the strike instantly knocked off the fangs in its jaws. Even its lips were torn and blood oozed out. Roar! This strike instantly pissed off the tyrannical pirate leader. It stood up with its legs and its two arms struggled frantically to break free from the linen rope. Its green eyes turned red and it whispered with a mouth full of blood, wanting to rush towards Kant who was on the steps. It pounced fiercely without any fear of death. Even the four Jack Allen pirates on beside it were also aroused. Although they had wisdom and civilized, but when they went crazy, their ferocity was far more terrifying than the uncivilized low-level Jack Allen. Stupid, Kant looked at the Jack Allen pouncing at him without fear. On the side, a footman with a thick fan-shaped shield came forward to block Kant. He used the shield forcefully withstood the pounce. Due to the force, he took half a step back, but he instantly withdrew his shield like a spring. He quickly gave a vicious right hook with his right hand tied with a chainmail glove, the punch heavily landed on the left cheek of the pirate leader. Bang! The pirate leader's teeth flew out, and his entire body blew away along with the heavy punch. He heavily fell down the stairs and laid in front of the four shocked Jack Allen pirate subordinates. The Swadian footman was silent. He shook his wrist and stood by Kant's side again. Can we have a good chat now? Kant said faintly. The Swadian footman at the side cooperated and raised their bastard swords. The sharp blades reflected the light of noon, bringing not warmth but the awe of slicing lives. Yes the pirate leader coughed and struggled on the ground. It spat out two broken teeth, mixed with the smell of blood in its mouth. Its eyes were filled with despair. It stood up again and knelt in front of Kant. It lowered its head as if it had given up everything. Human noble, what do you want to know? This is very good. Kant nodded, satisfied with his tactfulness. 
Standing up and walking down the three-story stone stairs, Kant came before the pirate leader. He slightly squatted down and looked at its hopeless, murky and despairing eyes, he slowly asked, Tell me, when will your large fleet arrive in this desert? Tell me, and I will let you go. I swear on my honor that I will never kill you. His words were very tempting. Moreover, there was not a trace of malevolence on his tender face. Even his eyes were quite sincere. The four Jack Allens immediately swallowed their saliva. To Kant's words, it was like they had grabbed onto a life-saving straw. They subconsciously looked at their leader whose cheek had been slapped until it was swollen. Their eyes were filled with the desire to live. No one would really want to die. No matter how strong their willpower was, after experiencing thirst and hunger, they had lost their faith. What I said is true. Glancing at their eyes, Kant's lips curled up slightly. I swear on the reputation of a noble. There are seven days left, the pirate leader finally opened his mouth and lowered its bleeding swollen face, it said, we are the advance team. We set off half a month earlier than the expedition team. If we are not out of our expectations, they will arrive at the southern part of the Naran Desert in seven days, which is the beginning of next month. Very good, Kant stood up with a smile and sat back in his seat. Kant looked at Firentus and Manit who had just finished patrolling the captive area, he nodded and said, This information is very important. I like this friend. What do you think? Of course, he is a very good gentleman, Manit followed Kant's words and complimented him. Firentus also nodded. As a knight, he looked down on people who were captured in the war and still revealed the secrets of their forces. If they could endure the torture and death, he could still praise them. Although death was still their final ending. But Firentus could guarantee that he would not chop them up and use them as food or fertilizer. Send them back. Kant waved his hand and motioned the footman to pull the five high-level Jack Allens away. As if he had thought of something, he even reminded the footman, give them some water and bread. Well, if they don't eat bread, they can also eat some dried meat as a reward for answering their questions. Yes, the Swadian footman answered. Lord. We, we eat bread, a Jack Allen pirate answered eagerly. Kant heard this and chuckled, oh, that's even better give them bread, dried meat, and clean water. He paused and looked at the Jack Allen pirate who answered, pointing at it, he ordered, I like this guy very much give him another dried sausage. If he can answer the questions we want to know in the future, let him eat his fill every meal. I, I am willing to surrender and join your side, the Jack Allen pirate immediately knelt on the ground, ignoring the complicated and angry eyes of his companions beside him. He shouted, I know a lot of information about the Mannheim coast and the kingdom of Grey Main. Very good, Kant nodded with a smile, still waving his hand to signal for them to go away. Soon, the footman took them away again. Kant turned around and entered the council hall. Firentus and Manit also followed. Sitting back in his seat, Kant's smile disappeared and he said faintly, In seven days, the expedition army will arrive at the Naran Desert. It means that at the beginning of next month, we will welcome our real enemy. That's right, Firentus and Manid looked at each other. Kant frowned and tapped his fingers on the table. Looking at his two trusted subordinates, he said, Arrange people to interrogate these high-level Jack Allens. Let them tell us everything they know. Try to improve our understanding of the Mannheim coast as well as the Kingdom of Grey Main. Don't relax. We will officially face them next month. You will know more comprehensive information, Manit had some research on interrogation. Okay, Kant nodded and looked at Firentus at the same time. Since Manit is in charge of the interrogation, you will be in charge of the army. When the Jack Allen arrive at the Oasis lookout, I hope you can give the best response. Firentus also nodded heavily. I will do my best. Chapter 143, An Army with Only Footmen Manit had some experience with interrogation. As a genius born into a merchant family, he knew the art of many languages, such as intimidation, 
using both kindness and intimidation, and offering benefits. These were all the most basic methods in business negotiations. Changing the way of thinking and the method was the technique of interrogation. Manad took his leave. Soon, he made the arrangement of interrogation and the soldiers in charge of intimidation. That night, the results of the interrogation were recorded on a sheepskin scroll and presented to Kant in written form. However, the results were somewhat unexpected. Ha! Kant had a mocking smile on his face. Taking the information obtained from the interrogation of the captives as an example, the Kingdom of Greymane had already mobilized all of its elites for this operation, except for the necessary defensive forces of their own country, and they had almost recalled all of the, the forces outside the Mannheim coast. Their goal was to invade the human countries in the Naran Desert and turn the southern part of the desert into a colony of the Kingdom of Greymane. The idea of going all out was an extremely bold strategy. It had the imposing manner of if I don't succeed, I'll die. But in Kant's opinion, these high-level Jack Allens had never considered that if their strategic operation to colonize the human countries failed and the forces in the Mannheim coast shrank, they would be unable to advance or retreat, and would be surrounded and killed. The consequences were unimaginable. They think that the human kingdom is very weak. Manad sensed Kant's thoughts and reported with a shrug, in their opinion, one Jack Allen footman can easily deal with three human footmen. If the Jack Allen starts to fight with their lives, they can deal with five human footmen. Kant raised his eyebrows slightly. That's true. Firentus did not comment, but his silence was equivalent to tacitly agree that this statement was correct. That was the truth. The height of a Jack Allen was generally 2.3 meters, while a well-nourished high-level Jack Allen would usually weigh up to 300 pounds. All of them were tall and heavy, and their bodies were full of strong muscles. The speed, strength, and weight-bearing ability of their body were much stronger than the footmen of the human countries. Not to mention the individual duels. Even if it was a clash between armies, the human army would still be at a disadvantage. However, Kant picked up the sheepskin scroll again. Kant looked at the records regarding the composition of the army of the Kingdom of Greymane and their battle sequence, his tone was a little surprised, but, these Jack Allens, don't tell me they think that the human kingdom is the same as them, that the army is made up of footmen. Manad nodded. As you can see, that's indeed the case. Humph, Firentus snorted coldly and frowned. This seems like a joke. There's nothing I can do, Manit shrugged and said helplessly, when I heard the information from the captives, I also didn't believe it. Only after I verified the words of the other captives and I realized that it was true. Only footman, Kant tapped his finger on the table, he couldn't help but laughed. Because the Naran Desert was a natural moat. The Mannheim coast, which was connected to the Sea of Stars, while the Dukedom of Leo, which was connected to the inland, didn't have any communication at all. Neither side knew the other. They were even less clear about the military level and troop class structure of the other side. But now, it seemed that the Kingdom of Greymane on the Mannheim coast, which was formed by high-level Jack Allen, was too ridiculous. They only relied on heavy armored footmen to fight, and even the long-range troops were recruited mercenaries or lizardmen captives. Moreover, they were treated as auxiliary soldiers. During the war, they also served as engineers, transporters, and other miscellaneous troop class. They have never seen cavalry. There are also no horses on the Mannheim coast. Manit seemed to have thought of something and added, the only similar troops are the Elven Moon Deer cavalry. They use bows and arrows in long-range combat. Their close-range combat ability is quite weak. Bow cavalry. Kant raised his eyebrows, looking pensive. On the grassland southeast of Karadia, the Kyrgyz elites were the Kyrgyz veteran cavalry archers. The strongest bow cavalry in the entire continent. Under the influence of the tactics in the plains, these bow cavalry could even compete with the Swadian knight and Mamluk, the two strongest level 5 heavy cavalry. They relied on their extremely high mobility, as well as the accurate and deadly arrows that flew between the charging warhorse. 
As for the Bao cavalry who were good at guerrilla warfare, they never fought a head-on-head -head battle. As for the Swadian people, they preferred charge attack for victory. Firentus spoke and expressed his puzzlement. I don't quite understand. How could the kingdom of Greymane be so foolish as to think of colonizing the human countries with just the heavy footmen? At the very least, I understand that the dukedom of Leo is also a country that mainly uses the heavy cavalry. Their strength on the plains is not something that these 3,000 heavy footmen can compare to. The information is not accurate, Manit frowned slightly and gave this conclusion. Kant nodded. Perhaps so. Only this conclusion could explain the Kingdom of Grey Mane's underestimation and arrogance. Since there had never been a battle between heavy cavalry on the Mannheim coast, they definitely would not have thought that humans would ride on war horses, fully clad in armor, and hold long spears to charge at them. They did not understand that a lance formation was not able to defend against the charging cavalry. Not to mention in history. Even the continent of Karadia had proven this point. As long as the terrain was suitable, a charging heavy cavalry, even if it was a level 4 Swadian heavy cavalry, would be able to break through the strongest level 6 footmen. The footmen formation formed by the Royal Nord Guards would be easily trampled and knocked down by these footmen butchers. Although this was a desert, the terrain was still relatively smooth. It was also suitable for cavalry battles. This time, we really have to be prepared. Kant knocked on the table and said solemnly to the two, We cannot underestimate the enemy. Understood, the two replied in a deep voice. They also understood that they did not have the resources to underestimate the enemy. They needed to fight alone and rely on themselves in the Drondheim fortress. There were no reinforcements. There were no backup forces. Even if they failed once, they would fell into the abyss. Compared to the powerful kingdom of Grey Mane, they did not have the ability to underestimate the enemy. Late night arrived. The guards began to change shifts. Kant's conversation with the two ended. He looked at the moon outside the window. It was in the middle of the sky. The moon reflected the countless dim lights in the dazzling galaxy, scattering the gentle gauze onto the desert. A new week had arrived. He slept until dawn. Kant got up. There were not many administrative matters to deal with this week. There were no any surprises. The soldiers were busy, dealing with the corpses left on the battlefield yesterday, burying or throwing them to the low-level Jack Allen captives as their food. This group of uncivilized races did not mind eating the corpses of their own race anyway. In other words, as long as there was food, it was good enough. Chapter 144 five more lucky draws. In the morning, the system dialog box appeared as usual. In the financial summary, the maintenance of the army was still the main expenditure. After deducting the dinar, Kant's balance was left with only two digits, which meant that he had completely ran out of money. Of course, this was temporary. At the beginning of next month, the trade caravan from Rivaden would arrive as promised. And these 2,000-plus Jack Allen captives had became the most popular commodity in the kingdom of Viagers under the recommendation of the leader of the trade caravan, Jocelyn. All the noble families were willing to offer their dinar in exchange for these hard-working slave miners. This was the source of Kant's dinar. With the endless supply of Jack Allens in the desert, Kant's captive trade was very hot. There was no need to feed them too much food and water. As long as they passed this week, they would become a ready-made dinar. These Jack Allens were weak due to hunger. They were also under guard. At least 50 Swadian footmen and 40 elite desert bandits took turns to guard them. There was no any disturbance yet. This was to do to cruel treatment to the captives. As long as there was any sign of disturbance, these Swadian footmen and elite desert bandits would show no mercy. It was like killing a chicken to warn the monkeys. There were more than twenty Jack Allen heads hung on the city wall. As for the corpses, they were directly thrown into the Jack Allen prisoners group, allowing the hungry companions to tear them apart and bite them, turning them into hard-earned delicacies. Drondheim Fortress was only this big. If the two thousand-plus Jack Allens were really to cause riot, 
the impact would be fatal. Fortunately, they were safe. Days passed. Kant sat on a chair in the council hall while F. I. Rentis entered the hall. He stood respectfully in front of the long table and reported, Lord Kant, the elemental giants have all been eliminated. This is the elemental gem that we obtained this week. The Ravenstern Ranger's archery is very strong, so there are only few flaws on it. Well done, Kant praised. This is what I should do. Firentus smiled. He took out the two pages that looked thin but were actually extremely tough. He placed them on the table with the nine elemental gemstones and said, Lord, please keep them properly. Yes, Kant nodded. Summoned the elemental giants and obtaining obtained mysterious elemental gemstones, this was the mission he had given to Firentus. And now, the mission was very successful. As for the two pages of the rare item, it was not only used Kant. Both Firentus and Manad were allowed to use it, Kant had consulted the system for this. However, the system had also given restrictions. For example, ordinary troop class could not use the rare item. The explanation given was that ordinary soldiers could not closely communicate with the system. He did not think too much about it. Kant turned to the attendant beside him and ordered, put it away. Yes, my lord, the peasant woman who was waiting beside him immediately walked over and placed the rare items and elemental gemstones in the wooden box. Then, she quickly walked up the stairs and returned it to the inner side of Kant's closet. My lord. I will continue to patrol the fortress, Firentus said. Go, Kant nodded and said in a serious tone, you have been working harder recently. Yes. Firentus bowed and left the council hall. Oasis Lookout was currently under the most strict curfew status. Anyone other than the patrol team was strictly prohibited from walking on the streets. Even if they had to eat, drink, and take a dump every day, they had to do it at their own post. Whether it was food or emptying the toilet, the farmers would take full responsibility. Safety was the most important thing. System, open the lottery store. Can still had the five honor points reward from the epic victory. He communicated with the system and said, start the five consecutive draws. There's no need to choose. Ding system lottery begins. The system was still straight to the point. The dialogue box popped up, and the colorful treasure chest slowly opened with Kant's affirmation. The colorful light began to bloom. You have received a construction pack, Viagir's Shooting Range X1. You have received a construction pack, Camel Farm X1. You have received a troop class pack, Viagir's Archers X50 People. You have received a troop class pack, Desert Bandits X50 People. You have received a special pack, Springs I times 1. The dialog box immediately refreshed. The listed data was displayed on Kant's retina. As expected of the system. Looking at the pack that he had received, Kant slightly raised his eyebrows. The reward this time was still generous. Especially the two troop class pack, it had increased the defensive ability of the Drondheim fortress. Moreover, with the addition of the 50 Viagir's archers, the intense long-range arrow rain became even more deadly. The longbows used by the Viagir's archers were more powerful than the crossbows used by the 500 Swadian militia. There are other gift packs. Kant's eyes swept across the dialogue box on his retina. The system's introduction was very comprehensive. Viagir's shooting range, military building. This is the most common shooting range in the kingdom of Viagir's. Archers can train here. Ten Viagir's archers are available for recruitment every week. The recruitment fee is 50 dinars per person. Camel Farm, Livestock Building This farm was located on a barren sandy land. It could only domesticate single humped camels. Although the environment was cruel, it was fortunate that private chat and water were guaranteed. The camels produced were all sturdy. Five adult single-humped camels were provided every week. They could be paired up on their own. The purchase price for single-humped camels was 1,000 dinar per camel. Very good. With a smile at the corner of his mouth, 
can't tap the table in satisfaction. He was slightly excited. Viagir's shooting range recruited 10 Viagir's archers per week, providing a long-range troop class permanently. This way, the troop class of Swadian could be avoided, and they would have to level up to cross Bauman. After all, according to the game and the current world, the Swadian crossbowmen that holding crossbows were still somewhat unworthy of the title of a level 4 troop class, if not for the fact that the power and accuracy of crossbows were higher than that of bows. The Oasis Lookout currently lacked long-range troop classes. Kant even wanted to get rid of all the crossbowmen and use Vigar's archers as the main force of the long-range troop class. One had to know that the level 4 veteran crossbowmen of the Kingdom of Rodex were already equipped with heavy crossbows. As for the level 5 troop class, the strongest long-range troop class, the weapons that the Swadian snipers were also equipped with heavy crossbows. It was just that their equipment was a little better. However, as a long-range troop class, soldiers that able to produce more and stronger output was the most worthy. The level 5 troop class, Rodic Sharpshooter, was equipped with siege crossbows and steel crossbows. This was simply the difference between heaven and earth. Now that Kant had the Viagir's shooting range, he could recruit the level 4 troop class, Viagir's archers, directly through the shooting range. This way, he could saved up the time and experience points. Who knew how much dinar he needed to recruit the Swadian archers into the battles if he went for the other ways. In Kant's eyes, the archers of the kingdom of Viagir's had very high cost performance value. Chapter 145, The Eye of the Magic Ball The camel farm solved the problem of Kant's trade caravan. With these one-humped camels, known as the ships of the desert, Kant could opened up a complete trade route in the Naran Desert, from the natural salt mines to the Oasis Lookout, then to the Post House, and finally to the Stone Pass. The vast desert sea was no longer a natural chasm. This lottery solved my big problem. Kant smiled. But his eyes looked at the final reward of the lottery. Even though he was mentally prepared, he was still a little surprised. Spring's eye. Kant slowly read out this word. It was very simple. Very clear. Even the most complicated grammar could found an adjective for it in the shortest amount of time. The source of a pool of spring water. That was it. However, this made Kant's heart beat faster and his breathing became a little faster. This was because this special gift pack brought a value that far exceeded the sum of the previous four gift packs. That's right, the sum. In Kant's opinion, this gift pack was almost priceless. Spring's Eye, this spring's eye connects to the mysterious water elemental plane, and it can continuously flow out the clearest spring water. Place it on the ground with no water vein, it will automatically generate a water source. The system's introduction to the spring's eye. This made Kant thought of the lake created by the magic ball outside the city wall. It was able to change the terrain. Or rather, it could directly affected the changes in the rules. Ding system prompt. Spring's eye has been detected in the host's area. It is recommended that you combine the spring's eye into one. It can increase the amount of water that comes out of the spring and also replenish the groundwater. It can form a wide-range water supply effect and create a natural water network. The system immediately gave a hint. Kant was slightly stunned. Normally, the system would not give such an obvious hint directly. But now, the system directly told him that it was the wisest choice to combine the spring's eye with the original spring of the Oasis Lookout. It could produce the most optimal result. Place the spring's eye. Kant connected with mind communication system and directly chose to use it. The golden card in his mind disappeared and turned into fine powder. His mind reappeared in the sky above the fortress, forming a god's view that could overlook the entire oasis. Data chain spread. On the north side of the council hall, inside the wall on the north side, there was the water source of oasis lookout. The spring was more than 20 meters long and more than 4 meters wide it was filled with scattered data streams now. The rules of the system began to merge with the rules of this world. In just a few short seconds. 
the turbulent spring water began to gush out instantly, shooting out more than 30 centimeters on the surface of the water. It was like a short and thick fountain, more like in Spring City ancient country, the most famous Bayotu spring. However, this protruding spring was even thicker and had more water. Soon, the spring water within the entire city wall began to overflow. Even the three drainage holes on the city wall could not discharge the sudden surge of spring water to the lake outside the city wall in time. The spring water had seeped into the sandy land outside, it instantly sank down. Even from the sky, it could be seen clearly. Kant was slightly stunned. The data stream in his eyes began to spread in an instant. The entire land seemed to have changed a little as the spring water seeped in. The data stream flowed within it. Vaguely. Kant even saw that the spring water that was filled with the data stream not only gushed upwards, but also filled the sandy land near the oasis lookout with water. Even the ancient water channels under the sand layer began to spread the spring water filled with the data stream. In a very short period of time, it invaded the dried water network and continued to spread deeper into the desert. Is that an ancient river channel? Kant swallowed his saliva and looked into the distance. The spring water that was filled with data stream was spreading extremely quickly. And in the distance, that seemed to be an area of tribal ruins, as well as the location of natural salt mines. Spring water also appeared there. However, it was not a narrow underground water system. From Kant's God's view and the faint sensing of the data flow, the surging spring water directly rushed up the sand layer. Following the dried-up ancient river that had once existed, it continued to spread into the depths of the desert. As if it was going all the way to the deepest part of the desert, the devil's land that the Jack Allen talked about. It can't be that it's going to support the enemy, right? Kant subconsciously swallowed his saliva. He was a little worried about the spring water that appeared in the ancient river. If there really was a water source, that wouldn't be a good thing. Once the water source was controlled by the expedition army of the high-level Jack Allen that was about to arrive, they were able to obtain fresh water supplies. Kant's idea of filled up the water well, leaving only the lake outside the city wall to disrupt the enemy's morale would be a complete failure. As for his strategic plan, he would also declare it a failure. It was as it had sensed Kant's worry, the spring water that had spread to the far distance began to recede. No, it should be the data flow inside had started to recede, causing the surging spring water to completely stop. It disappeared into the yellow sands of the ancient riverway. Not long after, the water that left on the sand was evaporated by the scorching sun, and the traces of the surging water were gone. Kant calmed down. As long as the spring water he created didn't have the effect of supporting the enemy, it would be fine. Build the Viagir's shooting range. Kant recommunicated with the system and planned to continue building. The wooden targets in his mind, and the building cards that looked like a training ground, were directly shattered. But they began to appear in the real world. On the southeast side of the Drondheim fortress, there was still an empty sand land but now a large amount of data began to spread from the bottom up. Out of nowhere, a row of small wooden houses with the typical rugged style of the Kingdom of Viagirs appeared. At the end of about 30 meters of land there were shooting targets made of wood, straw, and boards appeared. There were also a few arrows stuck in them. The construction of the Virginia shooting range was completed. Very good. Kant nodded in satisfaction. Unfortunately, he couldn't recruited the archers he was short of dinar. Otherwise, he wouldn't had let go of these level 4 long-range archers right before the Great War. Kant shook his head, he continued to communicate with the system, build a camel farm. The construction card then shattered. But this time, it appeared in the livestock area on the west side. On the south side of the lake which near to the west side of the city wall, a row of straw shacks made of straw, wood, and linen appeared on the side of the city wall. There were also sinks and food troughs made from date palm tree trunks. The camel farm was completed. However, there were no camels in it yet. Kant also did not have the money to buy one for 1,000 dinars each. His savings balance was now in double digits. 
If he wanted to have some dinars, he needed to wait for the next week, the first week of the new month. Jocelyn would brought his trade caravan from the faraway kingdom of Viagers to come here. Show the troops. Let's finish this. Kant's expression was not discouraged. Dinar could be earned at any time. Moreover, in this lottery, he obtained fifty Viagers archers and fifty desert bandits as a reward. It was a ready-made reinforcement. His mind retreated from the god's view. Looking at the slightly dim interior of the council hall again, Kant's lips curled into a smile. Everything is ready. The current him only needed the east wind from the Mannheim coast to make him take off again. The kingdom of Greymane used all of their strength to gather a expedition army was a mistake of their strategic plan. Kant would told them. How badly they would lose from this strategic plan. Chapter 146, The Real Expedition Army Time passed day by day. However, the defenses of the Oasis Lookout did not relax in the slightest. Forty Serendian horsemen, forty elite desert bandits, and fifty desert bandits were like the stars scattered in the sky. In a scattered formation, they began to patrol the north side of the Naran Desert. A large number of light cavalry soldiers spread out and scouted carefully. However, after scouting in cone-shaped formation, the ten desert cavalries didn't return like the other light cavalries. Instead, they continued to ride forward. They continued to follow the ridge line at the top of the dune and rode towards the depths of the desert. On their horseback, they prepared enough food and water to last for a week. They were heading to the natural salt mine. According to the high-level Jack Allen captives, their route was from the depths of the Naran Desert, through the white-colored alkali soil, and finally to the salt mines on the south. They indeed arrived at the southern part of the Naran Desert. According to the plan, the area where the salt mine would be set up to support the team. These 300 Jack Allen pirates also used their force to brazenly seize control of the low-level Jack Allen tribe. Then, they led their troops to continue occupying the Oasis Lookout. In the shortest amount of time, they would establish the outpost base of Expedition Army and then attack the Stone Pass at the gap of the Seenway Ranges Canyon. They would successfully enter the territory of the Human Kingdom and plundered it wantonly, creating a colony dominated by Jack Allen. It sounded like a perfect plan. However, the success of this plan was not up to the Expedition Army of the Kingdom of Grey Maine. Kant regarded the Naran Desert as his own estate, he would not cooperate with them obediently. It was not for the human kingdoms. It was also not for the Dukedom of Leo, the Grand Duke of Leo, Lord Cameron either. It was only for himself. Kant would not allow the strategic ideas of the Jack Allens to become a reality. Thus, he sent these ten desert bandits to the natural salt mines to scout and detect the arrival of the expedition army of the Kingdom of Grey Main. With the aid of the high mobility of light cavalry, they were able to send the information back to the Oasis lookout in the shortest time possible, to ensure that Kant and Firentus could make preparations as soon as possible. It could not be like last time, where it became a ridiculous blunder. Even now, Kant thought of the five acres of date palm jungle that had been completely cut down, and he felt quite distressed. But it was too late. According to the time calculation, in less than ten days, the expedition army of the Kingdom of Grey Main would arrive at the Naran Desert. At that time, these date palm jungle needed to be cut down. It is indeed a pity. Kant stood at the top of the council hall and looked at the barren sandy land to the north. The wooden stakes were neatly arranged there, and the once lush forest could still be seen in his mind. Now, only the wooden stakes and the canal that flowed with the lake could vaguely recall the once lush past. However, the inside of the Drondheim fortress was heavily armed. One hundred Viagers archers were already stationed in the four city walls and arrow towers. Together with fifty Swadian archers at the window of the city walls attic and twenty Ravenstern rangers at the top of the council hall, they formed the current long-range defensive firepower. They were the first to launch the arrow rain attack to the enemy. The fifty Swadian footmen in double-layered heavy armor held a thick fan-shaped shield in their hands. They stood in the darkness of the eaves with cold expressions on their faces. 
their eyes under the flat helmets filled with coldness. Around them were the 500 Swadian militiamen who were waiting for orders at all times. They held hunting crossbows that weren't very powerful, but they could still look at their enemies indifferently and cause damages. Their mission was very important. This was because not far away from the city wall, there were countless captive camps that built from tents. There were close to 2,000 Jack Allens living in there. Although they were all so hungry that they felt dizzy and it was difficult for them to stand up and walk. But with so many of them, if they really started a riot, it would definitely become a threat. Even the heavy cavalries not far away were secretly on guard. Ten Swadian knights who were wearing double layers of heavy chain armor and leading top-class war horses that were also equipped with heavy full chain armor. They were all Swadian knights who were two meters tall, abnormally tall. They were carrying a knight sword and a knight kite shield on their backs, they were slowly walking on the training ground with heavy lance in their hands. Behind them were five Mamluks from the kingdom of Sarand. There were also 87 Swadian heavy cavalries, who were equipped with similar heavy armor including their war horses. These were the heavy cavalry units that Kant was currently focusing on. There were also the light cavalry that had already spread out to patrol. For example, 40 heavy cavalries should be defined as heavy cavalry soldiers, but they had the advantage over the Sarandian horsemen, who had greater mobility. There were also 40 elite desert bandits and 50 desert bandits. This is my confidence. Kant had a smile on his face as he stood at the top of the council hall. He could not help but let out a soft breath. Power comes from the barrel of a gun. In this world where the strong preyed on the weak, justice was nothing but the advantage for those who were stronger. Everything was arranged properly. At the top of the dune where the natural salt mines were located, ten desert bandits had already set up their tents and were constantly on alert. They were constantly looking into the distance, looking for any enemy troops that might appear. It was all thanks to the jack o siege last time. Most of the low-level jack Allens here had already been captured. Even if there were a few low-level Jack Allen that escaped, they would still be chased down by these ten light cavalries with their scimitars. Even if there were forty or fifty of them, they would still be slaughtered by these light cavalries. The low-level Jack Allens were scared to death by the human cavalry, they did not dare to face them. In this dangerous silence, the week was about to end. The night covered the sky. Under the bright stars and the pure white moonlight, Midnight passed by. This was already a new week, a new month. At the top of the dune of the natural salt mine, the two desert bandits who were in charge of night duty had just finished feeding their and comrades' desert horses with food and water. They twisted their stiff waists and chatted casually while looking at the desert to the north. With a casual glance, they seemed to have noticed a faint shadow on the horizon. They rubbed their eyes. The two of them perked up and looked again. Their originally relaxed expressions instantly stiffened. They turned their heads and entered their own tent with cautiousness. One kick after another, they kicked up their comrades who had just fallen asleep and had yet to fall asleep. The enemy is here. The other eight desert bandits were suddenly startled awake. All of them crawled up from the sand pits and stood outside their tents, staring into the distance to the north. In the depths of the night, a long black snake was stretching out in a crooked manner. Although the night sky and moon were not clear, how could these bandits who had lived in the desert for more than twenty years not be able to tell that this was the snake formation that was commonly used by the troops? Thinking of the order that Lord Kant had given them before they arrived, the ten desert bandits immediately tidied up their tents, got on their horses, and dashed towards the south in a flash. They wanted to quickly report this important information. The expedition army of the Kingdom of Greymane had arrived. Chapter 147, The Lucrative Slave Trade At the natural salt mine, the light cavalries were rushing back at top speed. In the white and alkali soil behind them, a long line of footmen was forming a slightly curved formation as they walked towards the dune in the south. Their speed was neither fast nor slow as if they were calm and steady. This was a marching pattern that only elite troops had. While ensuring the marching speed, 
they also able to ensure that they had sufficient stamina. This was something that normal troops not able to do. This required a high degree of discipline. The ten desert bandits sped up their horses and their return journey. This was because they all knew that this was the expedition army of the Kingdom of Greymane from the Mannheim coast in the northern part of the Naran Desert. They wanted to occupy their homeland and enslave them to become colonial army. This important information needed to be quickly returned to the Oasis lookout and reported to Lord Kant. They had to rush back at night. It would take at least an entire day to rush back. The Oasis lookout was still heavily guarded. At night, there were Swadian militia with heavy spear in hand and a large wooden shield on their left arm. They were in neat rows patrolling the inner side of the city wall. They were in teams of ten and were extremely cautious. Especially the prisoner of war camp, which was strictly guarded. For the sake of these 2,000 Jack Allen captives, every militiaman were filled with night shift and reduced their rest time. Time slowly passed. The late night was gradually replaced by dawn. Whoa whoa whoa. The male grouse began to crow like a chicken. It stood at the top of his chicken coop and flapped at wings, proudly declaring its ownership of the chicken coop and the female grouse. The first light appeared in the sky. It was already dawn on the second day. A new month. It was also a new week. Dong dong dong. The wooden door of the room was knocked lightly. Kant, who had not fallen asleep, woke up very quickly. He opened his eyes and asked, What's the matter? Outside the door, a Swadian footman was standing there respectfully. He reported respectfully, My lord, Mr. Jocelyn of Rivaden and his trade caravan have arrived. Yes, I understand. Kant nodded, sat by the bed and quickly put on his clothes. At the same time, he instructed, let Manit be in charge of welcoming them. The footman outside the door replied, Mr. Manit is already receiving them. Well done, Kant praised. After the footman finished reporting, he left on his own and stood by the stairs as a guard again. Kant put on his clothes, washed up, and walked down the stairs. On the first floor of the council hall, Manit was chatting with the leader of the trade caravan, Jocelyn, with a smile on his face. Occasionally, he even let out a few laughs. Although it was still dawn, the atmosphere between the two parties was very harmonious. Kant walked down the stairs, and the two of them stood up to greet him. Good morning, Lord Kant. Good morning, Kant nodded. He sat on the chair and to Jocelyn with a smile on his face. You came at the right time this month. It can't be helped. The kingdom of Viagers is too short of slaves. Jocelyn shrugged with a helpless smile on his face. Lord Kant, the last time we brought back more than 500 Jack Allen slaves, in less than a day, they were all snatched by the mine owners of the Snowfield Iron Mine. Well, this means that they are very popular, right? Kant chuckled. Of course. Jocelyn nodded. At the same time, he stood up, took out a letter from his pocket, and respectfully placed it on the table. Lord Kant, this is a letter personally written by King Yarajek to express our most sincere gratitude to you. The peasant woman who was waiting on the side walked over, poured a cup of date palm water for the three of them, and handed the letter to Kant. Let me take a look. Kant tore open the envelope and looked at the beautifully drawn envelope. It was written in the language of the Viagers. However, he still understood it. On the letter, King Yarajek expressed his gratitude. He said some words of friendship with a hint of flattery. At the same time, he also pointed out at the end that if Lord Kant was free, he very much hoped that Kant would be a guest at Rivaden. He would use the most ceremonious national etiquette and led all the noble families to welcome Kant's arrival. After putting down the envelope, Kant said to the leader of the trade caravan, Jocelyn, help me thank King Yarajek for his kindness. It's my honor, Jocelyn nodded. A and D. Kant's expression became slightly solemn. He turned his head and said to Manad, you will be in charge of counting the captives. All of them will be handed over to Jocelyn before morning. It's best to settle all of them before morning. 
they are already being counted, Manad replied. Very good, Kant praised. Manad was meticulous in his work. It was not without reason that he could become a business genius at such a young age. He then continued to report to Kant, when Mr. Jocelyn's trade caravan arrived at the fortress, he had already arranged his nephew and the footman I sent to count the Jack Allens at the captive camp. If there are no accidents, the count will be completed soon according to the time. Kant raised his eyebrows with a smile on his face. As expected of my trusted Manad. You overpraised me, Manad lowered his head humbly. The three of them chatted happily. After a short while, the wooden door was pushed open and the Swadian footman walked in. The footman who acted as the guard at the door reported in a deep voice, Lord Kant, the nephew of the merchant, Jocelyn wants to see you. Let him in, Kant replied. Yes, the footman nodded and turned to leave. A young man walked in quickly. It was the nephew of Jocelyn. The leader of the trade caravan. His face was filled with joy as he bowed respectfully to Kant in the council hall. Seeing you in the morning is like seeing a warm sun. Good morning, my lord. Okay, Kant nodded. However, he looked at Jocelyn and smiled. He wouldn't talk like that in the past. Jocelyn smiled awkwardly. I found a teacher in Rivadan who teaches noble etiquette. After all, he's going to lead his own team in business. These basic etiquettes are necessary. That's true, Manad nodded with a smile. Kant smiled and asked, is the result out? It's done. The young man nodded and bowed respectfully. Then, he reported, there are 2,096 captives this time. As the payment of 30 dinars per captive, we will pay 62,880 dinars. More than 60, 000, Kant raised his eyebrows. This was a huge amount of money. In the game, this amount of money was not a small number. Even a noble would be moved by it. After all, the value of this money was enough to sustain a large number of elite troops for several months. Yes, a total of 62,880 dinars. The young man repeated. However, there was some hesitation on his face. He looked up at his uncle and said slowly, but there are 293 Jack Allen captives here. I can't distinguish their value, so I haven't counted them. Chapter 148, The Return of the Scout Cavalries Hearing his nephew's words, the leader of the trade caravan, Jocelyn, was stunned. Jack Allens that can't be distinguished by their value. In his impression, he didn't know about the existence of the high-level Jack Allen. It's the high-level Jack Allen, right? Beside him, Manet explained, it's like this. We recently captured a new batch of Jack Allen. They have their intelligence and their own civilization, and they understand the human language. Other than their appearance being similar to the Jack Allen, they are actually no different from us humans. They even have their own kingdom so they call themselves the high-level Jack Allen. High-level Jack Allen, Jocelyn, the leader of the trade caravan, lowered his head slightly. That's right, Kant nodded as well. Is that so, after pondering for a while, Jocelyn asked, Lord Kant, what's the difference between the strength, stamina and endurance of these high-level Jack Allen and those beggars like Jack Allen? There's no difference. Kant replied. After thinking for a moment, he shrugged his shoulders and said, perhaps it's better because they have sufficient nutrition. I see, Jocelyn nodded. After pondering for a moment, he raised his head, with a smile on his face, he said, if that's the case, then these slaves will definitely be more popular. I'll buy them at 50 dinar per captive. If Lord Kant can provide such high-quality slaves for a long time, then I'm also willing to maintain the slave trade for a long time. This was an affirmative answer. Kant smiled and nodded. No problem at all. I've never lacked captives. Not only did they not lack captives, the captives also appeared in large numbers. Most of the low-level Jack Allen in the Naran Desert had been captured. The rest could only go to the Seenway range, 
which had a complicated environment. The difficulty, cost, and time had increased by a lot to search for them over there. However, a new source of slaves had come. It was the expedition army of the Kingdom of Greymane from the Mannheim coast, which had passed through the Naran Desert. They were also strong Jack Allen who were good at endurance. These intelligent high-level Jack Allen were definitely more popular among the mine owners than those beast-like low-level Jack Allen. Let's make the deal first. Kant smiled and said to Jocelyn, It's a pleasure to work with you. It's been a pleasure, Jocelyn stood up and bowed with his hands on his chest. He sincerely agreed. For him, Kant did not put on too much noble airs and was very easy to get along with. Moreover, Kant did not have any improper thoughts towards his trade caravan. He was completely a benevolent lord, and earned admiration and respect in people's hearts. 62,880 dinars from the low-level Jack Allens obtained. 14,650 dinars from the high-level Jack Allens also obtained. A total of 77,530 dinars. Just short of 3,000 the dinars would be close to 80,000. Just short of 30,000, the dinars would be able to reach 100,000 goal. At this moment, Kant finally understood why there were countless black slave trading ships Earth's Atlantic Ocean, crazily transporting black slaves. This black slave trading line that made up of the blood and tears of the slaves and corpses was maintained for nearly 200 years. Because the slave trade was really too profiteering and the profiteering of the high-level Jack Allen shocked Kant even more. 2,000-plus of low-level Jack Allens were only sold for more than 60,000 dinars. Less than 300 of high-level Jack Allens directly bought close to 15,000 dinars. The profits of both sides were not on the same line. But for Kant, whether it was high-level or low-level, they were all his Jack Allen captives bringing him sufficient dinars and solving his current predicament of running out of oil and urgently needing dinar. The grayish sky gradually brightened. The sun appeared in the Naran Desert. The cold air quickly rose again, and the entire Naran Desert became warm. The captives were filled into the three carriage in turn. They stuffed all 2,300 Jack Allens into the carriage just like they were some divine artifacts, as if it was a world of its own. Jocelyn's nephew didn't wait long. After breakfast, he left the Oasis lookout and led the Jack Allen slaves toward Rivaden, selling them to the Snowfield Iron Mine owners who were in desperate need of slaves. Although the majority of the profits would go to the noble families of Rivaden, they could still make a small profit. Oasis lookout returned to its peaceful and cautious state. Manad continued to purchase a large amount of grain from the trade caravan. Most of it was stored grains and dried meat. This was an early plan. They didn't know how long the war would last. Perhaps they would have to go through the encirclement of the enemy. Therefore, they had to ensure that they had sufficient food and water. Oasis Lookout naturally did not lack water. Large amounts of spring water came out from the spring water behind the council hall every day. The most important thing was food. As the number of people increased, the quality of the troop class increased, and the demand for food became greater and greater. Just like the Swadian militia. They were once peasants, they ate two pieces of bread, one piece of dried meat, and one bowl of thick soup every day. Now, they ate eating four pieces of bread, two pieces of dried meat, half a piece of dried sausage, and two bowls of thick soup. They also ate some fresh roasted antelope meat to replenish the energy they used during their daily training and patrol. Everything was to prepare for the war. Time continued to pass. Kant stood at the top of the city wall and looked in the direction of the Seenway range. There was some doubt on his face. Because the sand gazelles were supposed to arrive at the end of the month, but it had become quite rare. As if the sand gazelles knew that a war was going to break out here there were only four or five small migration groups at the end of the month and the beginning of the month. The total number was less than 2,000, which was much lesser than the tens of thousands of sand gazelle. But that's good. Kant turned his head and looked towards the north of the desert. The doubt on his face faded away, and his face became serious. 
There were not many sand gazelles, it was not a big deal to him. After all, the skin and meat of the sand gazelle were not needed by the oasis lookout, which meant that it could be dispensed with. If a large number of sand gazelles entered the depths of the desert like the migration before, he would be very anxious. The expedition army of the Kingdom of Greymane was about to arrive. If these sand gazelle became supplies for the Jack Allen, these ready-made antelope blood and meat would become food that guaranteed their vitality after the cruel journey in the Naran Desert. That would be ridiculous. However, Kant's eyes suddenly looked to the north. He narrowed his eyes slightly. He seemed to have discovered several small black dots that were speeding towards him at the top of the dune. It's the desert bandits that we sent out. The Ravenstern ranger behind him had a better eyesight. Looking at the ten small black dots in the north, they raised their heavy bows and reported to Kant, My lord, these desert bandits who are in charge of scouting have returned. Yes, Kant narrowed his eyes. These were the ten desert bandits that he personally ordered to be sent out. Of course, he understood what the return of the ten light cavalries who had been scouting at the natural salt mine meant. Slightly clenching his fist, Kant ordered in a deep voice, send the ten desert bandits to the council hall. At the same time, go and look for Phyrantus and Manid. Tell them that I will summon them at the council hall. Understood, the Swadian footman that followed him immediately responded and turned around to pass on the message. This was an emergency. Chapter 149, To Pack 100 Man Team To Pack was exhausted. As it walked forward, one step at a time, it felt its legs were about to collapse. The mail armor in its backpack and the two-handed battle axe on its shoulders were all reasons for its exhaustion. However, the most important reason was its throat was so thirsty that it was about to spit fire, which indicated that it needed to drink water. Ever since it came to the south of the Naran Desert, he only drunk three mouthfuls of water, two of which were stinky urine. When it passed through the Devil's Land, its supplies were almost depleted. All the water sack in its backpack had dried up. Even if the water sack was swollen, it was filled with stinky urine. However, the only water sack that was filled with fresh water was not allowed to be drunk at all. This was the water sack that was only allowed to be drunk during the attack. They lacked water. Therefore, they could only use their lives to seize the water source from the enemy's hands. Their mouths made the action of swallowing. However, their throats were burning and painfully dried. As they could not take in enough water, Tupac's mouth could no longer secrete saliva. Even the sweat on its body became very little. In the past two days, it even found that it could no longer urinate. This was a dangerous signal. If it didn't have enough water to nourish its body, it would die of thirst. As a member of the Fang family, Tupac had seen similar records in the family library, and the low-level Jack Allens who had passed through the Naran Desert and the Devil's Land had also heard of the tragic consequences of lack of water. They had fallen in the desert and been burned into dry corpses by the scorching sun. If they were lucky, they would be buried in the desert. If they were unlucky, they would become the food of the other Jack Allen. No, Tupac spat out this word softly and continued to struggle as he walked forward with his comrades in front of him. However, in its heart, it was unwilling to die in such a humiliating manner. He had been deeply educated to be brave, it would rather face thousands of enemies and die gloriously on the battlefield instead of dying like the low-level Jack Allen who were eventually dried up and eaten as food. This was also one of the reasons why he held on and continued moving forward. At the same time, there was also the most important reason. As long as they reached the Oasis Lookout, they would be able to drink enough spring water. Sweet and clear spring water. Tupac believed that his comrades that were marching in a long snake-like formation, were holding on because of this reason. Otherwise, when they saw that there was no support team at the natural salt mine, the ruined low-level Jack Allen tribe, and the only water hole that was about to dry up, all of them would fall into mental breakdown. However, everyone's hearts were still filled with hatred. Under the commander's instructions, they all knew that all of this was done by those humans. 
destroying the support team and the low-level Jack Allen tribe had left them in a desperate situation. If they did not use their two-handed battle axes to chop off the heads of those humans, their anger would not be appeased. While his thoughts were running wild, Tupac suddenly noticed that the formation in front of him had stopped. Everyone had stopped moving forward. After climbing to the top of the dune, he stared blankly at the open space in front of him. A rectangular fortress was situated in the middle of the oasis. There were four arrow towers and a square tower in the middle. The entire structure was made of stone and wood. Roar! A howl was heard in front of him, causing Tupac to shiver involuntarily. This was the howl of the Chili Arch, the commander of thousand men. The entire expedition army of Jack Allen soldiers were instantly startled awake. They held back their thirst and quickly moved forward. They formed four square formations of five hundred people and quickly took off their linen robe, they took out their mail armor from the backpack on their backs and quickly put it on. Holding their battle axes, they became the once invincible Jack Allen soldiers who fought war on the Mannheim coast. Tupac had also put on his mail armor and a layer of linen robe. He held his two-handed battle axe with one hand while howling in the Jack Allen language. He ordered the 99 Jack Allen warriors under his command to quickly line up behind him and wait for the next order. Tupac was a centurion, the hundred-men commander of the Jack Allen army. He was a subordinate under the personal command of the Chili Arch, who led the troops in charge at the front of the 100-man team. Only the most elite Jack Allen warriors could be recruited in this 100-man team. Not only was Tupac powerful, but he was also a member of one of the three great families of the Kingdom of Grey Mane, the Fang family. He definitely qualified as a centurion of this hundred men team. Dong 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 dong. The urgent bell chimes echoed. Tupac raised its head to look at the fortress in the distance. Its eyes swept across the city walls and arrow towers. It vaguely saw some human footmen stood on top of it, they were holding crossbows or bows, making threatening gestures towards them. This is a massacre. Tupac let out an angry howl and raised his two-handed battle axe. The hundred men team behind him also started to howl. Even the entire Jack Allen team was howling in anger. This was the anger towards the weaklings who provoked them. Past experience had already proved that as long as they climbed up the city wall and fought in close combat, these humans were not their opponents. Even the underage Jack Allens were able to defeat the adult human sailors, not to mention these elite warriors who had been through many battles. They could easily kill several humans without getting injured at all. Howl! The Kiliarka's howl was heard once again. It was an order that only the Jack Allen troops understood. The entire troop moved towards the eastern wall. Tupac charged at the front, and very quickly it saw the southern side of the eastern wall. The city gate made of wood and iron sheet appeared before its eyes. There were also a large number of human soldiers defending on it, but no matter how it looked at it, it looked like these humans were just struggled, it was like they wanted to submit to the siege attack that were about to begin. Drink water! Tupac roared loudly. It took out the remaining water sack from its backpack, which contained clean fresh water from the Kingdom of Grey Mane. The elite hundred men team behind it, as well as the other hundred men Jack Allen team, did the same. They took out the water sack, opened the cover, and gulped it down their throats. As their stomachs were filled with fresh water, all the strength in their bodies seemed to surge up, the bloodshot thirst for slaughter also slowly appeared in their eyes. Howl! The orderly howls of wolves simultaneously let out from the throats of all the Jack Allens. There was no way out. They not able to return alive, and their voices were filled with sorrow and determination. This was a howl that would only be let out during a battle to the death, and it belonged to their race's ancestor. The blood in the Jack Allens' body began to boil. They were extremely sensitive to the smell of blood and couldn't wait to enjoy the upcoming bitter battle. Charge! Tupac raised its two-handed battle axe and placed it on its shoulder. It led its hundred men team forward in an instant. Their speed became faster and faster, almost as fast as running. However, 
this hundred men team's formation wasn't scattered. Three rows of Jack Allen formed a rectangular formation. They carried their two-handed battle axes and followed Tupac, the centurion. Their running speed became faster and faster, and they were getting closer and closer to the city gate. The bloodlust in their eyes also became stronger and stronger. They all knew that there was a lake under the west side of the city wall, but no one said anything. No matter how thirsty they were, they still pretended that they did not know that there was a water source there, that they could drink, that they could live, and it was able to alleviate their extreme thirst. Because they all knew, when they attacked the city, such a lake was equivalent to a moat. They had already abandoned all their siege weapons after crossing the desert, it was impossible for them to attack the humans on the city wall after crossing the moat. That was the stupidest choice. They only had a chance to survive by using their two-handed battle axes to smash that city gate. Roar! Tupac roared, its mouth full of terrifying sharp teeth. The 100 men team behind him followed closely behind. They gripped the two-handed axes tightly. As long as they reached the city gate, their battle axes made of refined iron would be able to smash the city gate into pieces with their own powerful swing. They were getting closer and closer to the city gate. 500 meters. 300 meters. 100 meters. 80 meters. 50 meters. But at this moment, a dense buzzing sound suddenly appeared into Pac's ears. It raised its head and looked. In its eyes, a rain of arrows instantly appeared from the top of the city wall and covered the sky and earth like a storm. The dense arrows and crossbow arrows surrounded them all almost at an instant. Why are there more arrows than the lizardman's crossbow bolts? Tupac suddenly had some doubts in its mind. It had seen the rain of arrows before, but it was definitely not like this. The lizardmen liked to use crossbows in conjunction with their lance arrays. It was definitely not like this, where the arrows fell from the sky like a torrential rain. However, Tupac was unable to continue thinking because a brown cone-shaped arrow had already shot into its eye socket and pierced straight through its neck, destroying its head and spine. Now, it had fallen to the ground, just like the ancestors of the Fang family, dying gloriously on the battlefield. In the surroundings, the originally glorious elite hundred-man team, had all fallen. All of them fell to the ground miserably under the wave of arrow rain. Their bodies were covered in white arrow feathers. And there were countless of arrows and crossbow arrows on the surrounding sandy ground, just like flowers that were sending the elite hundred men team to their deaths, appearing in the oasis lookout of Naran Desert. The strange and bewitching aura of death bloomed with the corpses of once living creatures. Roar! The Jack Allen troops at the back were completely silent. They just watched the strongest elite hundred men team not even getting close to the city gate. The sudden death surprised all the Jack Allens. It happened at the same time. Some of the more experienced Jack Allens thought of the elven rain of arrows. Although they had never seen it before, they had heard of it. It was so intense. It was so unreasonable. Using the most violent and fiercest arrow rain attacks to kill any enemy who dared to appear in front of them. Roar! The chilly arch roared in rage as it launched a general attack. This decisive command made all the hundred men teams instantly understood what their commander was thinking. Even if the entire army was killed, they would still climb up the wall of the human city with their corpses. They would slaughter all of the humans inside and used the blood of those weak humans who only knew how to defend the city wall to pay tribute to their fallen comrades. This was a siege attack that they could no longer turn back and they could only grit their teeth and fight. Chapter 150, The Long Prepared Fortress When the Jack Allen troops appeared within the range of the Arrow Tower, the Oasis lookout was already prepared. Drondheim had been waiting for a long time. The troops were quickly mobilized. The archers all entered their preset positions, holding their long bows and crossbows, coldly looking at the expedition army of the Kingdom of Greymane that appeared at the top of the dune. One hundred Vyager's archers were in charge of the arrow towers and the city gates. Fifty Swadian archers were in charge of the shooting window in the attic. The five hundred Swadian militiamen, 
who were also holding hunting crossbow, all climbed up to the top floor of the attic. Although the hunting crossbow that equipped by the militia with was less powerful, there were stones prepared beforehand at the top of the attic, which were almost half the size of a human head. If they were lifted up and heavily smashed down the city wall, the jackalan skull would not be able to withstand it, it was expected that their skulls would be cracked in an instant. If they were lucky, blood would flow all over their faces. If they were unlucky, they would instantly become a corpse whose head had been smashed. Get ready for battle. Get ready for battle. Phyrantus walked quickly in the attic with a solemn look on his face. He stared past the attic the expedition army of the Kingdom of Greymane on the sand dune in the distance, he subconsciously tightened his grip on the hilt of his swords. Phyrantus warned the crossbowmen who passed by, aim before you shoot. Try to cause the greatest damage. These words were actually things that they were well aware of. But Phyrantus still reminded them before the battle. As long as he could won this battle, won this crucial city defense battle, Phyrantus was willing to repeat his words hundreds of time. He was a noble of Swadia. This was the most difficult battle after he followed Lord Kant. If he had won the battle, Phyrantus and his family would receive the glory that would honor them for the rest of their lives. If he lost the battle, even Lord Kant's life would be threatened. Other than dying on the battlefield to prove his family's honor, there was nothing else he could do. This was also the best way for a noble to preserve his honor. Phyrantus was still arranging the archer's battle plans. There was some noise coming from the city wall behind him. Keep quiet. Phyrantus reprimanded, only to find Kant's figure appeared on the city wall. At the same time, the twenty Ravenstern rangers who were originally stationed at the top of the council hall also arrived. Lord Kant, it's very dangerous here. Phyrantus walked over and bowed, but there was worry in his tone. He advised, the city wall is the line of defense of the soldiers, not the place where the noble should appear. Kant smiled indifferently. Noble. Lord. Phyrantus still tried to dissuade him. Please return to the council hall. The surrounding archers also looked worried. After all, this was an extremely dangerous front-line city wall. If the enemy rushed up, the attic was only three meters wide and would definitely block the way out. As a lord, he definitely couldn't risk his life. It's all right. Kant looked outside through the attic window. These Jack Allens won't be able to rush up the city wall in a short time. He noticed that the enemy didn't carry siege weapons. Kant frowned, he turned to the twenty Ravenstern rangers and ordered, You guys go to the east gate. I'll leave it to you to guard there. You'll be assigned to the archers and listen to Phyrantus's orders. Understood. The twenty Ravenstern rangers replied at the same time, they turned around and walked quickly towards the city gate. These archers' support was very timely. Phyrantus nodded in thanks, while analyzing, those Jack Allen expedition army didn't bring any siege weapons. According to my deduction, their main direction of attack is our city gate. That's right, Kant nodded. This was what he had thought. Crossing the Naran Desert, these expeditionary forces didn't bring much supplies, let alone heavy and complicated siege weapons. There were only two ways to attack a city. Using two-handed battle axes to cut down trees, building simple siege weapons like wooden ladders and siege cones, or directly crashing into the city gate using the strong bodies of these Jack Allen and heavy two-handed battle axes to smash the city gate into pieces. Of course, it was not impossible to stack the corpses up to the height of the city walls. However, judging from the current thoughts of these high-level Jack Allen, their plan was to use the battle axes to smash through the city gates. Howl. Wolf howls came from outside, urgent and decisive. Kent and Fate looked towards the dune. The Jack Allens had already formed five square formations and were moving towards the east. It was as expected and clear, their target was the eastern city gates. At the same time, a hundred men team of Jack Allen broke away from the main group and charged out, carrying their battle axes. There's no diplomacy. Kant's tone was slightly mocking, 
but his eyes were cold. I still want to persuade them to surrender. Firentus laughed lightly and did not continue the topic. Pulling out the night sword in his hand, Firentus turned his head and ordered in a low voice, All archers and crossbowmen, pay attention. Do not shoot freely. Stay alert and wait for the order to shoot. The low voice replied in one sentence, understood. My idea is to wait for the enemy to get close before shooting. Firentus reported to Kant in a low voice, the sudden burst of arrow rain killed and wounded all the enemy's hundred men team. This will affect the enemy's morale. You are the commander, you make the arrangements. Kant nodded. All the archers gathered on the eastern wall. There were only a few militia on guard on the other walls. There were not many enemies, and Drontheim Fortress did not have many soldiers. Therefore, in a siege, they usually gathered their troops to attack a city gate. Moreover, these Jack Allens who lacked resources could not sustain the attack for long. According to Kant's estimation, it would take at most three days. Shoot! Firentus's order appeared on the city wall. The loud voice made all the archers react in an instant. They released the bowstring in their hands and pulled the trigger in their hands. They shot out the long prepared arrows and crossbow arrows. Hum hum! The vibration of the bowstring instantly appeared in the attic. The whistling sound outside was the shrill cry of the arrowhead tearing through the air. A black shadow whizzed past. From top to bottom. Then, it heavily smashed into the hundred-man Jack Allen team within a 50-meter radius of the city wall. The arrowhead easily pierced through the mail armor and deeply pierced into the muscles. On the sandy ground within the entire area, clusters of flowers bloomed with the tail feathers of the arrowheads. The three rows of Jack Allen team who were originally running with large strides while carrying a two-handed battle axe, there were more than ten arrows or crossbows stuck on their bodies. With a shooting range of 50 meters, even the militia with hunting crossbow rarely missed. Not to mention the level 4 long-range troop class whose archery skills were even better. And the strongest were still the 20 Ravenstern Rangers. As a level 5 troop class, they coldly pulled their bows and shot arrows, aiming at the glabella, eye sockets and chest of the target with the arrowheads that could easily pierce through armor, and stabbed their arrows into the enemies.